Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about faults, the types of faults, active and inactive faults, faults line in the Philippines. This will be the fourth quarter topic and learning competency number two. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. Objectives by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to first is to identify the geological fault, types of faults, active faults, and inactive faults, fault line in the Philippines. The second one is to illustrate how movement along faults generates earthquakes. And the third one is to acknowledge the relevance of recognizing locations that are safe during earthquakes in the Philippines by answering the reflection of learning. In activating the prior knowledge for the short review, the students will identify the fault being described by the statements by placing them near the is a fault. A fault is a fracture or break in the earth's crust where the rock on one side of the fracture has moved relative to the rock on the other side. Faults occur when stresses in the earth's interior cause the rock to crack and move. The following are the types of faults. So the first one is the normal fault. So fault plane angle, it is inclined at the angle less than 45 degrees from the horizontal. The direction of slip is that vertical motion where the hanging wall moves downward relative to the foot wall. This type of vaulting occurs in external tectonic setting such as divergent plate boundaries. The following are the generation of seismic activity in normal fault. Forms in areas undergoing extensional tectonic stress. It is where the earth's crust is being pulled apart or the divergent moment forming valleys. As the hanging wall moves downward relative to the foot wall, Tensional stress build up along the fault plane. Eventually, the accumulated stress exceeds the strength of the rocks, causing them to rupture and release energy in the form of seismic waves. Another types of fault is the reverse fault or the thrust faults. So the fault plane angle is inclined at the angle greater than 45 degrees from the horizontal. And the direction of slip is that vertical motion where the hanging wall moves upward relative to the foot wall. Reverse fault typically form in compressional tectonic settings such as convergent plate boundaries. The following are the generation of seismic activity in reverse faults. Reverse faults form in areas undergoing compressional tectonic stress where the earth's crust is being pushed together. 
As the hanging wall moves upward relative to the foot wall, compressional stress build up along the fault plane. When accumulated stress exceeds the strength of the rocks, they break along the fault, releasing stored energy as seismic waves. Another type of fault is the strike slip faults. So for the plane uh, fault angle, nearly vertical with minimal inclination from the horizontal. And the direction of slip is that horizontal motion where the movement is predominantly lateral along the fault plane. Strike slip faults are common in transform plate boundaries where the two tectonic plates slide past each other horizontally. The following are the generation of seismic activity in strike slip faults. So strike slip faults forms in areas undergoing lateral tectonic stress where the earth's crust is moving horizontally past each other. Stress builds up along the fault plane due to the friction between the moving plates. When the frictional resistance is overcome, the rocks on either side of the fault suddenly slip past each other, releasing energy in the form of seismic waves. The following are the fault movement and earthquakes. So the first one is the buildup of stress. Movement along faults creates stress and pressure in Earth's crust. The second one is the release of energy. So when stress becomes too great, the rocks break releasing energy as seismic waves that cause earthquake. And the third one is the seismic waves. These waves travel through the earth and can cause significant ground shaking and damage. The following are the Philippines fault system. So the first one is the active faults. These faults have a history of recent movement and are considered a high risk for earthquakes. The second one is inactive faults. So these faults have not moved in a long period but may still post arrest. And the third one is the fault zone. So areas with multiple faults that are interconnected. The following are the active and inactive fault lines. So the first one is that the Philippine Fault Zone is the major active fault system that runs the length of the archipelago. The second one is that the West Philippine Basin Fault System is another active fault system located in the western part of the Philippines. And the third one is that Western Philippines Fault System is located in the eastern part of the Philippines and is considered inactive. The following are the tectonic plate boundaries. So the first one is the subduction zone. So the Philippines plate is subducting beneath the Eurasian and Pacific plates, creating volcanic activities and deep earthquakes. The second one is transform boundaries. The Philippines plate also have transform boundaries with the Eurasian and Pacific plates causing strike slip faults and shallow earthquakes. And the third one is convergence. So the convergence of these plates leads to the formation of the complex and active fault systems in the Philippines. The following are the safer location during the earthquake. So the first one is the areas away from the fault line. The second one is the building designed with seismic resistance. And the third one is the open spaces and evacuation routes. The following are the earthquake preparedness. So the first one is to understand the rest. So know your local fault lines and potential for earthquakes. The second one is to prepare for disasters. Have an emergency plan and disaster kit ready. And the third one is to stay informed. So listen to the official sources for warnings and instructions. For the work example, the students will write T if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. 